Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm playing a little bit of Cauldrons of War Barbarossa, which is a turn-based strategy game that lets you play through the operations starting in June of 1941 with the German invasion of Russia, and in through to the winter months of 1942 and the Soviet counteroffensive uh, near the Moscow front. Um, with that being said, the reason I'm playing here today, I'm not starting a new Let's Play series of this game. I've done a couple already, and I really enjoy this game. It's, it's a really nifty turn-based war game that puts you in sort of supreme command of either German or Russian forces, but also does a really good job of abstracting away some of the minutia while also giving you some of the key strategic decisions uh, that someone in your position would have to make. It's not a game about um, managing regiments attacking on flanks or managing individual divisions. It's a game about managing armies and army groups and determining priorities and where the key operations are going to occur and the overall uh, operational level tactics that are going to be uh, commenced by your armies. You know, do you want your armies to use blitzkrieg tactics? Do you want your armies to use sort of more traditional uh, slower uh, assaults? Are you going to do Kessel operations and try and cut off enemy uh, formations, or are you going to try and destroy them in their positions? And so this is a really interesting game that I've covered on the channel several times, but that's not why I'm talking to you here today. I'm talking to you today because there's some news on that front, and this isn't breaking news per se. This was actually announced back at the end of October, so it's been almost a month now since this news came out, but it was something that I only recently stumbled across. So I was looking at the Steam page uh, for uh, Cauldrons of War. I think, I forget why exactly, but I was looking at, probably looking to see about uninstalling or looking through a couple of different games, sort of hard drive management, and I noticed that there had been a newish new -ish patch that came out for Cauldrons of War. And I was curious, you know, what did, what did that uh, include? So I took a look through the description of the patch and there was some, in, some information around like, you know, uh, more flexibility for the Germans attacking, you know, toward Rostov from Kharkov or some other things like that. But at the very bottom of the note, something that I had not seen before, there was a PS note from the developer that said, I am working on the Cauldrons of War sequel Cauldrons of War, Stalingrad. The new game will include the operations from May 1942 to February 1943. Uh, also, uh, there are some cool features that I'm working on for this that I would like to retrofit into Cauldrons of War Barbarossa if possible. So that is the reason that I'm talking to you today. This is a, a new game announcement, if you will. Cauldrons of War Stalingrad is in development from the developer of Cauldrons of War Barbarossa, and it will focus on May 1942 to February 1943. That is literally the extent of what I know so far. But I did think it was worth sharing with all of you. I am a little bit curious to see how this exactly shakes out. Uh, Cauldrons of War Barbarossa, one of the, the really well-done elements of this game, was forcing you as an army commander, or I guess front commander, to decide where is your effort going to lie. There were a lot of key decisions that would come up in the game around things like, do you want to you know, focus on shifting troops south to complete the surrender of Kiev? Or should you keep your troops focused on a drive on Moscow? Do you want to shift divisions to a drive on Moscow from the south or from the, from the west? Do you want to uh, actually try to take Leningrad? Or do you want to besiege Leningrad? So these really big strategic decisions uh, that the player had to make. Now, I'm curious, Cauldrons of War Stalingrad, you know, Stalingrad, in the grand scheme of things, the Stalingrad operation would have been something that was like just one operation in Army Group South while all the other Army Groups are, are sort of, you know, fighting on. And so in the original Cauldron of War, when you cover the entire front, the entire Eastern Front, if you're going to just focus on one offensive on one front, I think the question is, what are you doing on those other fronts? What else is going on? And so that could pose a challenge for a game with that broad of a uh, sort of strategic landscape to capture interestingly, because almost all of your activities would be going on in the south, you know, with the drive in Stalingrad and then the drive into the Caucasus. Those might be two separate army groups, I suppose, for, for the game's sake. 
But then what do you do with Army Group Center? What do you do with Army Group North? Are you still trying to reduce Leningrad? Or are there, are there other operations that you can feasibly launch in other parts of the map? Or are you forced to decide, do you want to go for Stalingrad? Do you want to go for Moscow? Like what I'm, I'm, I don't know how the game is going to model that. The alternative approach could be a narrower look. Uh, so maybe Cauldrons of War would have a narrower focus that would only look at the southern half of the Eastern Front and would make you make key decisions around the drive on Moscow or the drive on Stalingrad, the drive into the Caucasus, where your resources lie there, what you commit there, what you do there. That could be an interesting approach for the game to take where, where it's essentially saying, listen, you know, we're not going to even look at the Moscow front. We're not even going to look at the Leningrad front because there's not enough going on there. I mean, obviously the war was going on. But from a army commander perspective, if, if 90% of your effort in this in the summer of 42 and into the winter of 43 is being expended on the Stalingrad and Caucasus front, um, from a game design perspective, it might not be as interesting to, you know, to have those other fronts largely be static. You know, if, if they're static and there's not a lot going on there, um, you know, the question may, may pose... Uh, be posed to a player of why do you include these fronts? Because by 1942, it was not feasible for the Germans to launch a broad offensive on all the fronts. There were operations going on in and around Leningrad, but it wasn't the same sort of effort. And so from a game design perspective, I think that poses some interesting challenges. But this is mostly just me rambling. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm not sure how the developer intends to approach it. I think a more narrow focus design that looks just at Stalingrad and the Caucasus could be really interesting. Um, but it would obviously be a very different, more narrow looking uh, field than Cauldrons of War Barbarossa. In any event, I am very interested to see what comes of this game. Um, you know, I think Cauldrons of War Barbarossa did a lot right. I think the focus on the sort of army level command where you are in charge of the entire front is really, that's not unique by itself, but abstracting away a lot of the minutia that a lot of war games still give you is is new. I don't think you see a lot of games that are willing to say, listen, no, we're not going to show you all the divisions. We're not even going to show you all the cores all the time. Um, you know, this is an this is a a game about being a supreme commander where you are not also a core and a division commander as well. And so I think the game did a lot right. And I'm curious to see how they approach something that is a more limited in scope uh, game. But I guess we'll see what direction they decide to go with this game. Uh, that's all I've got for you today, though. I am interested in hearing your thoughts below. What do you think they should do? How do you think they should approach the game? Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.